Hey guys, it's the Music Vlogger, back with another video. In this video, I'm going to tell you what the biggest lie in music is, so that when someone tries to pull the wool over your heads by telling you this, you won't believe it. This lie is that the last 10 or 20 percent is harder, percentage point for percentage point, than the first 80 or 90 percent. Now I understand that that's a little bit confusing, so I'm going to explain it with five examples, so that hopefully we can understand it together. Now the best example that I know, and the one that I want to start out with, example number one is me. I just got to take my notes to the tripod here so I can read them. Okay, it's me. Example number one, me. I am someone who is a jack of all trades and master of none. I play a lot of instruments, but I need to go over my timeline with you so that this example makes sense. In fifth grade, I started playing trombone. I had class every day for an hour through the entire school year, all the way up to high school when I took up guitar. Now in high school I started taking jazz band, which meant that I played trombone and band for two hours, five days a week, through four years of school. This means that in middle school, just the time I spent in school playing trombone, I played for over 7,000 hours. And this also means that in high school and middle school, the amount of time that I spent playing trombone in just my classes is over 20,000 hours. Now we need to rewind a little bit because my freshman year of high school, I started playing primarily acoustic guitar, but really any kind of guitar I could get my hands on. And while guitar is pretty different than trombone in a lot of ways, for example, it's a string instrument, that's a big difference. You can play more than one note at once, which I mean, technically you could play two notes at once on trombone. That's probably a topic for another video. But despite the differences that guitar had, within about a month of playing guitar, I had probably reached about 40% proficiency. So what happened here? Is guitar just that much easier than trombone? If I managed to reach 40% proficiency after just a month of heavy practicing, then I could just dedicate another month and a half and literally be 100% proficient, be the best guitar player in the world. That's not what it was though. See, as I logged my first 7,000 hours into the trombone, inadvertently, I increased my proficiency in a number of other instruments. Here's some arbitrary numbers to kind of explain this. So over the course of four years, while my proficiency on trombone probably rose to like maybe a 70%, my proficiency on guitar jumped up right to a 30%. And my proficiency on piano jumped up probably to like a 50%. My proficiency on ukulele, which I didn't even know I was gonna play, jumped up to like maybe a 40%. And my proficiency on bass, because bass is written in the same clef as trombone, jumped up to like 60%. And I had never even touched the instrument. I didn't know I would. Now this proficiency is a little different. This is potential proficiency. And I know this is getting a little confusing, but ride with me. I had brought my proficiency up to like 35, maybe 40, maybe 45%. Again, these numbers are kind of arbitrary, but I didn't just start from zero when I started playing guitar. I really started from being a good percentage proficient in the instrument just because music isn't some black and white pathway for each instrument. While my proficiency grew in trombone, so did it grow in other regions in different varying values. Example number two, band. You guys may have been in band. In fact, comment down below if you have been because we could probably relate in a lot of ways if you have. Band teachers will often get caught saying something like, guys, You've made it 80% of the way, okay? But this last 20% is the hardest percent. You're gonna have to practice your butt off to get this last 20% because it's way harder than getting the first 80%. The last 10, the last 20, you know, the last 15, the last 5% is gonna be so hard. You're gonna have to practice an hour every, I mean, they'll, they'll go in on you and they will push this narrative, which is that the last percentage of music is the hardest and it's not true. The truth, is that every hour you logged into your instrument brought up your proficiency on that specific song a little bit. So after logging 20,000 hours into the trombone, I might be at like a proficiency level of 90% or 95%. Um, and while that proficiency level is really high, my proficiency level for the song that my band director is asking me to get good at has raised just from all those hours I've put into music. Because again, music is this broad spectrum. Everything affects everything. And so he's assuming that by spending a week working on the music and getting it to like being 80% good, we're playing a lot of the notes right, we're playing a lot of the rhythms right, that that week is what's accountable for being 80% proficient in that song. It's not true. We may have gotten 5% better in that amount of time. And it might take a month of really hitting that song to get it to sound perfect. It's not that it's harder. 
It's not. It's that you are recycling your energy that you put in before. Now I think there's an actual number, and this is an important distinction. There's an actual number, an amount of time, an amount of efforts that it will take to get you from 0% proficiency to 100% proficiency. And everything in between that is a simple mathematical equation. If it takes you 30,000 hours to get 100% proficient at something, that means that once you've logged 15,000 hours, you're gonna be like halfway there. Although you might be like 25% there in another category, which is what makes it confusing. Example number three, a quick one, piano. Never really played it when I was little. I mean, I kind of messed around on it like all kids do, but I never really was good at piano when I was little. But in high school, a good while after playing the guitar and a good while after playing trombone, I decided to give it a shot because I really liked singing. And at first it kind of sounded like this. But after about two weeks of playing the piano, I was able to use all of the proficiency points that I had effectively built up over the years, and I was sounding a little bit more like this. And now, after logging like maybe 200, 300 hours into piano practice, I sound a lot more like this. I'd say maybe I'm 80% proficient in piano, maybe 90% proficient. But in reading piano, I'm like 60% proficient because I haven't really put very much effort into reading treble clef, which you need to do for piano. The reason I was able to do this so quickly is because I did so many other musical things that boosted my proficiency. And it's not that getting the last 10 or 20% of piano would be harder than getting the first half. It's that it'd be exactly the same percentage point for percentage point. Another great example, bass. Like I said before, trombone uses bass clef, and at this point I'd already played guitar, which has a very similar layout to bass. All I had to really do was learn the style that you play with when playing bass. And I had to learn what the bass is meant to do. And after that, maybe a month of playing, I was at 90% proficiency in several different genres on the bass. I could read the music because I had already learned how to read bass clef, and I knew my notes on guitar because I had learned what trombone notes are, and then I applied it to guitar. So if I were to try to get the last 10%, that might take me 500 hours. Again, just because I got to 90% with a month of practice doesn't mean that that month is what's accountable for getting me from 0% to 90%. Rather, it just took use of the potential proficiency that I had built up. Again, this is confusing. This is why I'm giving you lots of examples. Last example, and this one is a really visual one, which is why I wanna finish with it. I want to show you guys the push, this MIDI device that's on my desk. Now, I've never tried to play Don't Stop Believing on the push. You know, I've kind of played the main riff on guitar some, I've played it on trombone. I understand like what parts of the scale are used for the melody. So I'm gonna give it a shot. And then I'm gonna ask my wife to give it a shot. Now real quick, this isn't like I'm better than my wife. That's not the point. The point is that by doing several other kinds of music, I've built up a proficiency that is immediatized. Is immediatized a word? I doubt it is. It makes getting the 80% seem as though it's easier. But I've put so much time into having an ear to be able to do this. You have no idea. Okay, so here's me playing it. Bree? Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. And on a final note, I just wanna say one more thing. Don't be that person that uses this lie as a crutch. Don't be the person that says that the last 10% is harder and that's why they're not able to play better. You don't wanna be that kind of person. No one wants to. I've been that kind of person and I ended up realizing it's just an excuse. It's just a way of silencing the insecurities we have about not being 
100% there in a certain area. I think what's more refreshing is someone who admits the ways that they're not great. I think it's more refreshing for someone to say, listen, I'm 80% of the way there, I'm working on it, but it's gonna take a while for me to get 100% there. That's the kind of person you wanna be, and really, you can apply this to anything in life. If you enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it. As you may have heard, there have been some updates to YouTube's monetization policy, and I just barely slid in. I'm, I'm just barely eligible. But I really don't know when YouTube's gonna raise that bargain and say, instead of having 1,000 subscribers, you need to have 10,000 or 100,000. So we need to get out there, guys. We need to get growing. I'll do my part if you do yours. And just a PS to my PS, guys, thank you for being there. Um, on days when I am struggling uh, or when like I'm a little bit upset, something bad's happened, um, and I'm just a little bit down, I'll post a video. You know, I have 10 or 20 videos saved up. I'll post a video. And you guys give me such love in the comments. Uh, and I ex I've come to expect it, you know, I've come to know it because every single time I post a video, you guys show me love in the comments. Um, keep doing that. It really cheers me up. Um, you guys make this job, this YouTube thing, just so much better. Um, but that's it. I'll talk to you guys later, and peace.